All right, this week I just found out I got Copilot chat or the Copilot X chat feature. And um, yeah, I want to play with it. And I did a little bit this week, but uh, really want to share my findings. Uh, have some fun with it, kind of push the boundaries, see what it can and cannot do with where I touch most frequently. And then um, kind of just, hey, why can't it do this? Why can't it do that? Or wow, that was amazing. Um, I know that um, there's what the three main features you have uh, where it can highlight and explain a piece of code. Uh, you can ask it to like generate some code and then do some refactoring. Um, but in my experience so far, we're going to try to push it to limit and even take a little bit further, take it outside of uh, code, kind of go on to what I've been working on. Um, and you know see where some of the boundaries are uh, but yeah um so here's my email uh basically it, it's showing um what um you get when you finally get approved uh and how to install it and and how to set it up and um, i've already done the setup for visual studio code and visual studio so let's just go ahead and um, first thing I want to do, um, we're going to create a new project. Uh, just We're going to make a, a real simple tool, something that's going to go out and um, basically read a, a git repo. So we're going to use um, libgit too sharp and then we're going to jump through and um, we're going to talk to what copilot or, uh, or talk to um, GitHub, maybe push it up to a repo, something, something pretty straightforward. Um, yeah. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a GitHub sync, uh, to GitHub. So, um, right now at work, um, we are moving all of our local repos that are on a UNC path up to GitHub. And, um, basically trying to get it so we're not um, on premise and then we can take advantage of github the github actions the build a better ci cd pipeline than we currently have um at the moment um we have um and we're unique we have uh products that we build that we resell internationally and uh, we sell manufacturing software. And for the manufacturing software, we have hundreds, thousands, whatever. We have thousands plus of customers that we've modified and on our software. So they pay us for mods, we maintain them, and they load them on premise on their environment and they run them on, on their environment. Uh, so we have thousands of repositories. And so I'm gonna just make a tool that's um, our first thing that we wanna do so we don't have to um, pay for any anything to move them up there is we want a tool that's gonna push them up to the cloud. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a brand new um, little command line app and we're gonna test uh, GitHub Copilot and try to build this app real quick together here. All right, so we're gonna create a new um, little console app. This is just gonna be our sync to GitHub. Good enough. I mean, if you pick seven, it's not gonna matter too much. So yeah, I was super excited about um, GitHub Copilot. Um, seen the videos, thought it was amazing. Um, so I checked email every day, my private personal email as we're just moving to GitHub for work. I've uh, been following Twitter and just trying to get going to get it. And um, yeah, finally it seems like people are starting to get more access to it and I just got it. So it's time to start playing with it. 
So um, the first thing I need to do is I need to, um, and basically I'm hitting Alt forward slash, and this brings up Copilot. Um, you can see that little pink square around, I have no code really, or the square pink bracket. That's just showing the context of what it's looking at. And if you don't highlight or have something there, it kind of just, it thinks it's a new thing. Almost like just typing in, um, having a new chat inside of like ChatGPT. Um, so the first thing I, I want to do, um, I'm just going to hard code this um, for a certain folder. Um, and then from there, um, I'm not going to, I really want to just get, um, I don't want to do too, too much. I don't want to pull in too many different packages. Um, Cause I could, I could pull in like a command line parser, take my args, uh, go through it um, and make this really configurable. Um, for now, I'm focusing in on, um, you know, I have a folder I already know. I just want to sync that folder and push it up to GitHub. Um, I'm going to be cutting in and out. Um, I'm going to go and create um, my tokens so that way I can talk to GitHub. I'm not going to share that information. Um, so there'll be a couple spots where um, I'm going to just cut tell you what I did, come back, go from there. All right. So first things first, um, I'm going to basically, I have a directory that I'm just starting at, right? So I have a, a base directory and right now it's, it's just my, um, my local folder just for this test. Oh, that, it doesn't help if uh, if I didn't really uh, go on. Look at that. Okay, my first little look at that. I I didn't know I was searching or talking to get uh, GitHub Copilot, and now I have. I mean, I can copy it and paste it in, but this little insert at carrot that'd have been nice. If it actually directive systems. Okay, so whatever. Right. Anyway, all right, so I'm going to try to code as little as possible for this. I know I could probably code some of it faster than asking um, GitHub Copilot, but I, I want to press uh, the extreme. So, okay, so I coded one line of code, but now after that, let's, let's um, uh, loop through um, each uh, subdirectory and the base there. So let's see what it builds. Okay, so cool. And again, with this insert carrot, I'm not sure what's going on. Um, I mean, of course I can copy this here. Um, just put my focus here, insert at carrot. No, not, it still isn't taking it. So, <laughs> A little bit of frustration just getting started to, oh, there it go. Wait, there we go. Okay, so we have our our folders. Not the best experience so far. Um, but, yeah, so alt, alt forward slash, I hit escape, it went away. Um, all right, so now, even then, I think that wasn't Copilot that pasted something in here because this looks like it does more. So, right away... Um, yeah, it, Copilot, this insert at carrot, not going so well, <laughs> bummer. Okay, so I really don't want to bash it. I'm really excited for, um, Copilot X. So, all right, so now we got to do something here. So yeah, let's, let's do something. So again, all right, so I'm going to, going to loop through here and, um, check to see if the directory is a git repository and i'm i'm guessing it's going to tell me hey um repository is valid well that that's doesn't tell me you know hey is git repo repository is valid directory path well it had no context okay so try again um let's see try again 
So let's see if the direct green is a the depository. Can it do better? Is it gonna remember what it, what is it doing here? Directory exists and basically is it a dot does the dot GIT directory exist? Okay, so if it's not a bare repo, that would work. Um, unfortunately, we already have um, it, it's a bare repo. So let's let's say um, handle um, working um, get folders that have a arrow get personal folders and bare repos right okay so okay is it remembering context no it's okay so I have the square bracket over here but now no it's not not combining the two here so let's try again all right, so I'm just going to control A, alt forward slash, and ask a copilot um, while looping through subdirectories, check to see if the subdirectory is a git repo. Handle personal repositories and their repositories okay so all right so there we go we got a little bit of something insert a carrot fail again all right so slowly we're building this up like i said i could probably go a lot of now i was actually hoping for it to use uh lib get too sharp uh, a NuGet package I've used in the past to basically just say, hey, go and, you know, check this out. So, all right. So, I mean, I'm still happy. It's a directory. It's a bare repository person, right? Okay, fine. Um, which is goofy because that's a Git repo. That's a bare repository. And I guess it doesn't understand, I guess, personal. And I, I'm going off of this. If I, let me just go to my code folder. Um, if, if I go out here and I create a new, um, repository and we use Git extensions, um, the interface that we use, so it's, it, they call it a personal repository, a central or bare repository. M maybe that wording of personal isn't exactly what we're looking for, but okay. Um, so whatever I, I mean, personal bear I can understand how that messed that up but okay so and really I don't care if it's not so and I don't like um, ifs and else ifs and whatever right I I mean um, I, I'm really follow and developer that I like to watch um, Nick chaps is he has a whole video of why he doesn't use else anymore um, it, it fits into the clean code practices uh, single responsibility principles. Um, so yeah, and if you get a chance, Google that, watch that. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't like the else here. But okay, I mean, can we, we can push it further. Um, how can I close this um, cleaner? Let's just see if, if it thinks there's like, hey, it got a little lazy. Um, I don't see any difference? Okay. Um, so what about, what about a bigger scope? Um, follow the clean code and solid principles. And let's see what it comes up with. Okay. Well, okay. I, I meant for the code I highlighted. And so I'm really getting um kind of bummed a little bit here but i am trying to go 100 percent. i'm going all you know like i said a lot of this stuff um i'm trying to not be smart so let's let's try to be smart with it so let's let's try this again all right rewrite this code to use lib it too sharp um and let's just see if you know so i'm doing some refactoring all right so cool all right 
Now, I've done this in the past and it even tells me how to install it. Let's just see what, what happens here. So, put this all here. It's got to yell at me for this, right? Um, okay, it has no idea. Um, I asked for that repo, so let's let's just add that repo. Let's go out um, and add libgit two sharp. Drop it in. So okay. Awesome. Okay. So now, hey, look at that. All better. All right. So. Now, there's a better way to, you know, saying it's a new repo, it's just assuming. Okay, so check to see if the um, uh, subdirectory is a git repo using little git too sharp. So it kind of lost the intention of the method. Repository is valid. Okay. So let's let's test it out here. So is valid. Nice. So do I have to have is is okay now I know there's a better line of code here. Um what's the base best way to ask it? Um let's let's try something more fun with um so that is valid. Um, I don't want to give away that I know, but I do know. Um, I just want to ask it a different way. Um, so, still bummed. It is valid. It exists. True if the repository resolved through this path. So, okay. So, um, um, repository is valid um do can can i use any file or folder in the path or in the git repo to see if it is a valid git repo or repository just I don't want to shorten the words because I don't want to have it misunderstand me. All right, check if folders that path. Okay, so still, um, so let's let's just test something real quick. Let's just put in something that's um, a valid repo here that uh, we'll use um, the git ignore. I just want to see what we get here. And I, I just got this machine. I got a couple of side projects um, that I'm working on. Um, stuff that just kind of on the side. Um, all right. So is not, is not, is not, is not. So you can't just point to any file. All right. Let's do it without the path combined. Try it again. Okay, so we got a couple. Not everything is a good, good repo. So, okay, perfect. So you have to point directly to the path. You can't be anywhere. So um, let's see here. If I pass, what if I pass a directory, another directory, a subdirectory? So I'm just going to pass in, um, put the path combined back in. This time, instead of dot .git, we're going to, well, let's actually try the dot .git. Does that work? Yeah, so dot .git still works. And now let me just put in a, another one that's a subfolder. And so, no. Okay. So if you point to a subfolder or subfile or file in the folder, it doesn't know. All right. So is there a way to use any subfolder in a git repo to 
Um, is there any way to check if any subfolder in a git um, is part of a git repository? And it should be yes. Okay, still is valid. All right. Is there a repository of discover? Wow, I'm having trouble typing today. Long day. It's 11.30 at night. All right, so yes, there is. And that's kind of what I was looking at is we don't have to use is valid. We can say discover. And when we do that, that's really what I was hoping that we do. So if it's null or empty, then at that point, um, it is not a git repo. And then I'm now changing up the logic. I said I'm going to do this, but then we'll just continue the next one. And now that is a git repo. All right. So anyway, I'm pressing the limits. It's it's not playing nice. It still has the check for for um, and what I should do is make a another like base. Let's just make a fake little um, a bear repo. Let's call it test bear repo. So now we have a new one. And I could have done the git command line, but at least, you know, visually. Um, okay, so now let's see. There's my test bear repo. Now I just want to test out. Okay, can um, using get to sharp, how can I tell if the repository is a fair repo? Still checking for the folder name. All right, so let's let's just take it another little step further here. Um, let's do this. All right, so all right, let's let's check Bing Chat out. Right, we'll just go to put our question in here. Do the same thing. So is Copilot X or Bing Chat better? And then we can kind of play around with. Let's also do Chat GPT. And yeah, I got I got some stuff I've been researching for. Um, I'm speaking this year at that conference, 2023 in Wisconsin Dells, uh, the last full week of July. So um, <laughs> I know right now I'm just kind of going off the cuff, but, um, anyway, we'll, um, trust me, I'm putting a lot of time into preparing. So you're going to get a good uh, presentation. I'm talking about spec flow, uh, doing BDD. Um, so, okay. So here we go. That that's the answer I like. So let's take the chat on this one. So here, um, chat, a uh, Bing chat, knows, hey, I can check to see if it's a bear. And um, same thing with ChatGPT. Now I'm using the free one. So this is what 3.5 or ChatGPT3. And basically it it's getting the answer I want from the same exact question. So, ah, gosh, like, is it, is this worth it? I'm, I don't know. I mean, still excited. So let's, let's get a little bit further again where um go to the next step here so next um what i want to do now that i have um uh, basically the folder here um i know that it's a git repo uh, what i want to do next is i want to go and i'm probably going to cut right here i'm going to go do um some setup um to go out and um get any information i need from uh, from GitHub, get my token, get it all set up. So, all right, I'll be right back.
All right, so I'm back, and basically what um, I did is I went out, um, got my token, I added it to the Windows Credential Manager, uh, and then from inside of here, I'm just going out, um, reading my settings. I'm not going to show you what's all in here, but uh, read read the settings um, from there. So that way, um, that's my store for my passwords, and. Um, to use that, I just need to install the um, Credential Manager. Um, that should get me, oh, come on. Okay, so I need, let's see here. Just mistype it over there. Uh, it's just credential manager. How did I misspell it? Oh, manage. That might help. Hello. Cool. All right. So get that installed. What am I not doing? Yeah, not at seven. Okay. Not sure what's up with all of that, but okay. So using the credential manager, basically what we're going to do is um, I can load it in just by using my credential ID. Um, and so I'm just going to take a piece of code here and I'm just going to throw um, my um, my password um, here and um, before we get too far I'm just going to read it in and I'm just going to use the ID that I put into my credential manager I uh, created a brand new GitHub repo. Uh, credentials, what is that? Bar, bar token. Oh, okay. I don't have the client yet. Okay, why is that yelling? It's using little get too sharp. All right, so. Now, I mean, if I'm going to do this, a lot of times what I like to do is try to limit how many dependencies. Um, are in a class, but right now I'm really just trying to force do my best with GitHub Copilot here to see how far we can take it. Um, Credential management credentials. Well, I'm trying too hard. Nope. I just need the password to be held. We're going to come back around to that bit. But OK, so here I write in my password. All right. Now I'm looping through my folders, loading up. Hey, is you know, did it return? Let us get repository, and we don't need an else, and we're good. Um, I mean, this extra try catch. I mean, honestly, from what I looked at, um, my guess is this has to be a valid path. It should be already a valid path. It could blow up there. My try catch really isn't doing me any good. I get. Um, what and why, but I'm just putting it to the console app. I'm just going to call this in the background. All right, so there we have our repos. I now have um, what I need to talk to um, GitHub. So let's go a little bit further. Um, I need to install um, OctoKit. I have gotten where um, Copilot tells me the repo to, uh, the NuGet package to install. 
I don't I don't know what I'm doing different today, but it it's doing something. I, I mean, okay. So let's um. All right. So what I want to do is um check to see if the uh, um local repo repository has a repository has an existing repository in GitHub. Alright, so we need um All that's doing is checking to see if I have a remote set there. Okay. Now, um, check in GitHub if the repository exists. I don't want to check to see if I have a remote. Come on, search, search it up. Sure, yeah, I wanna I wanna create a new one. How can I create a new one? Alright, so here this is looking better. Product header value, my amazing app. So it is the product header value. Class and octave represents the product or application that is using the GitHub. API. Okay. Uh, I mean, the applications. Okay, so th this basically is giving a name maybe for logging inside of GitHub. Okay. Anyway, all right, so let's go back and basically here's my client. It doesn't even show connecting. It just gets right to, hey, read it, which if it's a public repository, this probably works. So um, change um, checking. So check if the repository. Okay, so let's change it to Checking GitHub if the repository exists for a private repository. Alright, so and that's what I already set up for. We have our credentials. Alright, awesome. So, okay, so in this case, yeah, we're going to need OctoKit. Um, Alright, like, great, look at that. So we had a couple things, of course, this is, it's going to fight with because we're talking OctoKit, and this is going to be my my password. And this is going to be the git to sharp. And not found exception. That uh, is just part of system. Almost an octokit. Okay. Let me just change this up a little bit. Okay, so I'm I'm changing my scope of how much. So um Copilot X is not taking our jobs. <laughs> Alright. Alright, so basically I'm going to use um, this repository name. So let's take, um, let's just take this out of here. I don't know if that's what it's going to be, but, uh, or is that the, well, that might be the same path. We'll check that out here. 
And then I just want to, if not, I, oh, I'm trying too hard. Let's back it up. My typical thing I do, I always think. So directory is, oh, it is a string. Okay, so what we could do is change it up a little bit and um, I could do um, baster as a new that and now I can just use base or dot directories oh come on all oh, the if I can type today all right so now yep sure enough same thing so I'm doing a lot of this refactory now okay um, all right, so now all lined up, and what I can get back to is this is just directly the, so that would be just the name, not the full path. Um, as I've now gotten more frustrated of talking to somebody. Now maybe if I had, um, I, I know they're talking about having a voice, um, like you could talk through it through voice, but anyway. Um, so anyway, so let's just see what's out there. And I know right now um, I have nothing out there. I just created this a couple days ago. I've been using it to to test some other stuff I've been doing. And so, and this is my, I'm logged in as this. This is private, public, there's nothing here. So all of these are false. So basically if it's not found, then yeah, let's, um, doesn't exist, let's, um, create the repository. Is that enough context? Am I just not putting in good enough prompts? I mean, all right, so here we go. Uh, new repository. Oh, I gotta give it a name. Didn't copy enough. Actually, let's back it up. I'm getting too lazy. Insert care and right arrow. To accept, I already have a client, a little bit too far, credentials too far, all right, I'm back to where we're at. And this is my directory. Dot. Okay, so now essentially what it should do is it's gonna go create these repositories out there. So let's go see what we get. Okay. Credential manager through an exception. All right. Final I found. Okay. So I'm just gonna pause it for a minute. Go debug what's going on here, and be right back. All right. So I am back, and only because um, we're talking about credentials, my password. I don't want to show anything. I debugged that on my own. Uh, found out that when I loaded the credential management, it didn't have a system security, um, what, um, permissions, NuGet package, added that, um, all better. So, not exactly sure why that's young, but okay, anyway. So, now I got this going. Um, we still go back out here, we refresh, we're looking good, there's still nothing. So I'm going to go out and just run this. This is going to go um, now, it's running. So I didn't put a great message to say what one, but hey, it doesn't exist. Repository doesn't exist, so it's going out and creating them. And now it's done. So now I have a bunch of repos out there, all just built. So pretty neat. Now, nothing's pushed into any of these. So that's our next thing is let's get that going. Alright, so now what we need to do is um, so it's created and to push it, I think we have to create a tracking reference. So alright, so if if it's new so we need to 
um, create a new remote repository. Um, let's see here. New remote repository. Client repository create. Okay, so got to be more specific. So, um, using the okay so i haven't done anything other than the discover so um i've tried doing this with octokit i didn't see anything so to take the local i've been using lib get too sharp to add the um, local repositories uh remote and then add the tracking record so so using Flip it to sharp, add a new remote. Where the reference to the newly created uh, it Octo it repository. Just gonna go and just say, oh, I already have the new repository. Okay, new repository. Oh shoot, no, that's wrong. Okay, but okay, so it still got me what I needed. Okay, so insert it here. Please work. Look at that. It did something for once. It's probably a little bit too much because we just did the get up there. It loves to add extra try catches. <laughs> okay, so maybe I maybe that's uh, matching what was already there, and I just had to highlight it. But another insert it carrot failure. <laughs> so keep it coming. Um, all right. So remote name. Uh, I'm just going to call it GitHub, remote URL, going to be the new, new repository, I'm guessing it's just URL, boy I'm guessing, so let's just ask, how do I get the URL from GitHub that and push to find my local repository. Oh, look at that. Right? That's what I did. It says no. So, how come? Is it, does it, is it still knows about it? New repository question mark that I know it exists. No. Okay. What's going on? Okay. Why? So URL doesn't exist. So what is it? Okay. So let's try again. Our favorite little test here is we don't want to go into that stuff. All right. So how do I get the URL from let's get now I have no context here, so maybe that's part of it is when I did this wording, my copilot um the range of code that I'm pointing to didn't have enough range of text on my code to give it enough um context to help the search. So from uh Octo Kit Repository. I really can't spell it tonight. Let's try that. Clone URL. Well, that that's better. Okay, so let's go back here. I keep thinking there's some context here, but whatever. Okay. Oh, there we go. Look at that. If I ask better, it fixes it. Okay. So now 
even though I did that here and I do that here, does it give me an insert? I'm just trying to give it a better experience. Insert, no, it still wants, and now I'm getting an HTML URL. So I asked the same question. No. So clone URL. Oh, bummer. Okay. So repository clone URL. New repository, if I peek at that definition, is come on. That's Ocracid. New repository. Do okay, so let's do this then. R um git um, repository. Eventually I'll learn how to spell that thing. Maybe that's my headache is the new repository is what creates the repository, no? Oh, that's just like a holder. It's not a GitHub repository. Interesting. All right, let's just fix our formatting here. All right, so let's just do HTML. Oh, look at that. HTML URL exists. URL exists. Oh my gosh. It was right the whole time I was asking all those questions. So, user error. Um, <laughs> you're only as good as the driver is, I guess. Okay, so um, let's let's keep going. We have now added uh, GitHub remote URL, and, and we'll, we're going to do refactoring at the end. So, so far, um, let's just see how we're doing um, with this. So now we have the remote. And now I just need to push. So on the new, okay, so that now, here's my Octo repository. Let's just go and create an Octo kit repository. Do that. Oh, come on. Hang a little bit. We don't want to, oops, we don't want to double create it. All right, so what I'm going to do here is now that should be good for both. And then when we get down here, we want to use that URL. Okay, so it knows it's set either way. Nice. That is, oh, no, because I'm only in this spot here. So I'm assuming if it already exists, I'm, I'm putting an exception here. I get it. We could change the code flow. Right now, I don't like the, code, the flow of the code anyway, um, but um, we're gonna take it and keep going. And um, now that I'm here, and like I said, this should all be broken out into single responsibility principle, split it further, do whatever. Um, all right, but for now, um, let's keep going. We have, now at this point, we have a GitHub repo and um, so using the GitHub repo, um, oh, actually using my, um, let's get to sharp repository, push to GitHub. So, oh, okay, so it's saying, hey, if there's code that needs to be staged, stage it, make a commit. I didn't ask for that, right? And let's just, um, I'm guessing that's probably going to be similar. Nope, look at that. Hey, winner, winner, chicken dinner. So. I don't know what's happening here with Copilot X. It feels like it's, it just isn't up to date. Like, it, you'd think it'd be smarter if it had context to the code you're working in. So I'm, it looks right now that um, 
chat GPT uh, using uh, OpenAI's um, interface here seems to still beat Copilot X, which I'm really bummed because you know I liked that insert at carrot. I, I feel like there's so much potential there. Um, get a little bit of frustration, but but I see the potential. I know that it's going to get better. Um, but wow, I mean, a little bit of frustration here. So, dang. Um, so the, there's all my, this is what I need, right? I just got the URL from up there. And we're going to push. And I got to get that repo. And okay, so good, bad, or indifferent. We're going to remember that this is disposable. And we're going to basically do this guy. And we're going to move that uh, declare up a bit. And then let it know. And then we're just going to set it and get it. And um, up here, well, either way, it's we actually know that that exists already. We already know it's a, so we could actually we can do that here. Oh, we don't have the repo path, huh? Well, that would have been wrong. Oh, that's folding. Okay. Little details. Okay. So I have my loop get to sharp repo. Maybe I'll just change that name. And now we have that going. And now I need to know my remote. And I gave that name the remote name. So this push. Okay, I get it's only pushing that one branch. So let's just look at this line. How can I use? I'm not assuming anything. Get too sharp. That has context, even though I have, I highlighted it. Um, to push all branches. Okay, so remote asterisk and options. And it doesn't like remote. So why is it yelling? Because remote is not defined in that. Okay, so this is a little bit too short remote. Just like everything else. All right, so now what we have to do is um, uh, set remote um, both where the um, Remote name is GitHub. No, I don't want to add. Okay, so how do I get the existing remote? Um, maybe. Good enough. All right, existing remote. We just want it to be remote. So another thing, it just doesn't know about my local context as well as I wish it did. And I did make it nullable. So, okay. So it's not yelling. I guess I don't have turned on. 
So uh, okay, we could putz with that, but for now, okay. I just it's a good thing to handle them all properly. All right, so both cases they should be there and it should push now. So if I um, run this, it's going to be a bit slower. Or it's going to blow. Betty cannot be null. Fun. Okay. So what am I outside of? So I, I mean, in theory, it's a client. So let's, let's just debug one of these. So we're having of a hell of a time so far here. No, remote name, GitHub. Oh, what's funny is I created all of them before. Fun. Okay. So for now, I'm just going to be goofy about it. And we're just going to take and Okay, and then, so all of them are going to basically exist. So for now, I'm going to delete it and then continue. Shouldn't fail. We shouldn't add. So everything should just go through and get it and delete it. Get it, continue, continue, continue. And then eventually it comes through here, deletes it. So I'll write it down. All right, so. So let's go back here. Let's check out my repositories. They, they're all gone with it. All right, so like I said, I could have sat and just re-added all those remotes. But for now, the uh, assumption, I guess I could have just easily done this, but for now, now I'm thinking we're going to have the next issue. Okay, so request failed with 403. Oh, look at that. Never has set them. Fun. So, let's go back to that. Okay, so, run it. Oh, uh, shoot. I have my autos displaying. Well, that token I'm going to delete pretty quickly. So, uh, all right. So, request failed 403. I'm guessing um, that asterisk is failing. So, um, so let's check. Um, did we do that over here? How do I push all branches? Um, So basically saying, hey, to loop through all of them. It's calling it origin, not. Okay. Okay, let's just do this again. I mean, you can give it a shot. And same thing, 403. Okay. So, 
I don't know. I we keep running across where Copilot X is just not playing nice. And my remote is so let's remote branches. Uh, I don't know if this is correct either. We I just feel like um we gotta add tracking references. So you give me back my same code. I don't know. I really vomit. This is not I'm definitely not playing the game I wanted to play. Um Wow. So I mean that and um Essentially, we're going to skip all the remote branches, which to me is goofy. It should be, if it's not a remote branch, we come in here. So I feel like that's a, it's a bug. We're still getting 403s. Fun, fun, fun. Maybe it's what we're pushing there. Trying too, too hard. Um, let's see. I get what it's trying to do. So libget to sharp uses an implementation of libget to um, I'm assuming that's, that's a C++ library. I'm not hundred percent sure, but, um, so there are limited, it's not straight, just get commands, but, um, it talks to that P invoke or that DLL. Um, So I did a lot of the cheating beforehand, but I haven't really looked at it too much. I did this earlier in the week. Um, and so I I have a GitHub sync that I wrote that goes out, handles passing in parameters, goes out, creates, um, you know, so you pass in path organization, your credentials. Um, I validate that you pass in the right stuff. If not, um, Oh, this isn't even the latest. Uh, I have a little help context out there. And then from here, I register the services. So I did create classes and the latest I've um, even um, went further and made interfaces for everything. Uh, I mean, a lot of this stuff is using the network. So it'd be more of an integration test, not so much unit testing here. Um, and then basically I run my upload. And so I basically have, hey, go and, um, you know, loop through and find them. And then as I find them, then I load the GitHub credentials. You, we've already worked through, um, found all the paths. And this and the one I did, it even looped through subdirectories if that directory wasn't a Git um, repo, maybe a subdirectory to get repo. Um, 
And then, yeah, I'm going through finding or creating a GitHub repo. We already did that. We work on adding the remote. And then this is where the tracking references and then the push. Um, so out of a lot of that stuff, I mean, it, we're so close. Um, finally see if they exist. And then here's what I was looking for. And it was very close to create this ref spec. And yeah, we add a plus in the front. It allows a force push. And the force push is important because um, what we do when we sync is we want to have, if we delete a, a branch or delete a commit locally, we want the delete to show up there. So right now we're working on, we're keeping our local as a live and as we go forward, GitHub will be our live or our master. But for now, our local is until we build up some of our CICD pipeline um, to get away from our homegrown code that's been running since like 2002, 2003. Um, so yeah, I mean, we've been doing automated deploys for 20 years now. And um, so, I mean, a lot of homegrown tools, not not always the best uh, implementation, especially now with um, being able to do stuff more in the cloud. Um, but yeah, so I mean, we fought through it. We were probably 80% there. Of course, the code, let's, um, let's try to clean up some of this stuff, even though it's not working. Let's just, um, just check out some quick refactoring. So let's, what you can do is hit this little X. Is that just, is that, would have that helped? Maybe just clearing the context? I don't know. So let's just highlight everything and say, um, refactor, oh, well, scroll or, you know, refactor, uh, this code is, um, solid, Okay, so it's telling me, so uh, can you show me the code um, that is refactor? It's great that it told me the steps, and if I was a really a junior developer, that, that might help. I, I'm being sold that this can do that. I mean, I guess I could, I mean, I could go, hey, and just use my, you know, extract method, whatever, but, you know, I get it. You know, some of the stuff I said earlier, keep, keep my dependencies small. So like I said, our, the other sample app that I have, um, if you look, it's, uh, I, in my latest, this is not my latest one of this, but um, libgit two sharps in one. Um, Octokit, not libgit two sharp. So it's separated out. Um, a lot of this stuff, very, you know, if I have dependencies, they're, they're defined in my constructor um, or they're, you know, they're external dependencies. Um, from NuGet packages. So, I mean, it's a lot of very small methods, um, very, and I could publish this out there. I don't have, like I said, I don't have any keys in here that, um, that would give away anything crazy. So, I mean, I can publish this repo, but um, yeah, this isn't the latest. Um, Wow, but yeah, I, I expected so much more. I'm not, I'm not totally bummed. It's still, um, you know, it's still um, GitHub, and Copilot. It's still helpful. I, pro maybe it's just me. I mean, give me comments. Tell me what, what I should have done to make it work better. Maybe, maybe another week or two from now, um, things go where they get to a better version of of what they trained off of for, for coding. Um, I mean, I'm using C-sharp, probably one of the five, five or top 10 programming languages used out there. 
So I don't think it's the programming language. Um, so uh, it's just kind of bummed. So refactoring, it's not it's not doing as much as you know. Should be able to just say, hey, here's all the code. Give me something. It's just telling me the steps. Um, that insert into carrot keeps fighting me. Um, the context it really struggles with context. Unlike when you're in Chat GPT or Bing Chat. Um, I mean, just one thing after another. Um, I mean, maybe I have to give longer prompts. I'm giving a sentence or two. That's it's not getting all of what it needs. Um, all right, so let's let's go to another step here. So I have an existing repo. So we, we did, let's build something from scratch. We did, hey, refactor. Um, let's, let's just understand a project here. So I have a project I'm just going to open up. And um, for that conference, I'm going to be talking about BDD and um, SpecFlow. So I have a WPF app that I wrote with basically a the core of our code, the core of the code. I, I, there are samples of SpecFlow talking directly through um, a WPF app. It just it it has an extra layer to it. I like to to test the the code, the the business logic, um, the end to end test on the UI to the database. I didn't want to go that far. Um, I really believe more, you know, I don't want a ton of tests. I do like tests. Um, the tests that I created here, I really kind of um, focused more on, um, you know, the BDD and SpecFlow. So I can go and say, hey, these are the different ways I can request off um, and validate all these things. So some of these things, um, you know, I'm telling you what, what some of this does, but, um, let's see here. Let's, let's just do a couple things here. So, um, what is this code doing? It's a collection of spec flow feature tests, which specify the behavior of a time off validator. The individual can only add requests that are validated. The feature tests verify the behavior of the time off validator against a set of defined scenarios. Each scenario has specific conditions for which the code is expected to produce an error message. This is, it's exactly right. And I'm only looking at my valid, my, um, my spec flow uh, feature file. So that, that's really impressive so far. It's knowing that the other side, now is that a guess? Maybe. Uh, the scenarios include verifying that a username has been set, that the date is after today, the date is not on a holiday or weekend, checking if a username contains spaces. So it's it's simplifying a lot of these. Uh, spaces are control characters, and if there are multiple employees in the same department requesting off the same day, the code validates users' um, off-date requests, which provides a more automated approach to keeping track of users time off schedule. So, um, let's see here. Let's ask it further. Um, did, um, this validation use a NuGet package to build, um, the validation? So right now I'm asking something that's not based off here. So this only knows about this one file. It, it says in unit. It's using X unit. So that's wrong. Oh, I guess. Oh, okay. No, I'm I'm skipping ahead. So no, it's just talking about the this feature file. It's using spec flow. So okay. So what if I close everything and clear out the context and um, what does this uh, solutions um, See, it only knows about that current file. Um, let's ask something even more generic, like, um, do I have a unit test or logging on? See, it 
only knows about that one file at a time. It's not giving me a whole flow of everything. So, I mean, all right, well, anyway, let's try and let's just go, hey, I need to add a new test. So add a new scenario. where um, the employee uh, can't ask off on their birthday. I don't know. We're just, I like messing with people. Be a fun look if you test in this app and you'd be frustrated. All right, so let's see what it does. So I could have just added the scenario line and see what it did. So it looks like that it did look at that it added a given one then awesome all right and it and it did you reuse so the same um given statement okay given when creating given i am creating but whatever i gotta rewrite some of these to be a better um example but um but this given statement it reused which is great because the whole point of spec flow is when you have um, a, the same given, you only have to write that one line. That one line's a method. You only have to write that one section of code once. So you get code reuse uh, by doing it this way. And that that's great. Um, can't re so even yeah, it even knows hey, use this. Hey, I expect this message. That's awesome. So um, again, no. Insert at carrot, um, but I guess it's the whole file, so you can copy and paste the whole thing, which I've seen it do the whole file or just like inside of that block of code. You know, we ran that for each earlier and did that. Um, okay, well, that's cool. Not, you know, so it's not just C sharp. Okay, so let's, let's just, um, happy with this. I get what it's doing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking it only knows about the context of, of that one class. So only that, you know, or, or that one file, right? So if I go and take um, where I was requesting off here, and now I ask uh, that same question. Let's uh, do the whole file. Um, does this... Um, Validation use any um, new packages to perform validation based on the code provided. It's using an abstract validator, which is the fluent val validation is popular values. So true. I mean, this is using fluent validation. So there we go. Look at that. So, I mean, um, you know, um, what else can I do here? Let's go look at another file. Um, a lot of these are just models. They literally are just um, models for, for storing in a, this one, a SQLite database, but... Um, Let's do something here. Okay, so all right. Um so I have a new request off, which it validation is done in a separate class, but let's um and I ask off on a holiday. So I don't know if this affects like, this little X affects our context, but if it does, it'd be really nice to make that bigger, be more obvious if that affects how it responds. I don't know why that took the whole thing. I was asking a yes, no question. Um, I 
it doesn't answer my question. Okay, so then, then um, explain. Explain just in the current selected lines. Oh, look at that. A little feature. So interesting. I mean, there isn't much here. It's um, adding them to a collection because it came from the screen and then going over to the repository and adding them, uh, navigating away. Um, so it really isn't much to this. A lot. This is using WPF, so we have a lot of um, MVVM uh, binding and uh, property change. Wow, it's taking a long time. You, I mean, all of the other stuff, as soon as you ask it, it seems pretty quick. It, you know, that is the one thing I am beginning at. So maybe that's why Copilot X is $10 a month. It's uh, narrowed down for code, but yet doesn't seem to do as well um, as ChatGPT, even if I've assumed the Copilot X is using GPT-4, but it just doesn't doesn't seem to have it all it, it just doesn't seem to be doing good, as good as even just uh, the free version of ChatGPT. I'm not sure what's happening here. The, it was flying, now it's, I don't know, right? I mean, it's not the biggest class, 200 lines and, and I would say what, um, 151 lines of it is boilerplate. So we got 100 lines of logic. Everything else is really just properties, 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 properties. My constructor, some more properties. Wow. I, is there a... Yeah, did I just clear it? It's taking forever. Well, let's do that again. Let's explain. So control A, alt that. Click that, ask copilot. And yeah, explain this method. So last time I clicked explain, what's it gonna do? Is there just a bug with the explain? It's just Wow, I I really hate saying I'm disappointed. I'm so excited for this tech. I really see the potential. I really want to um, take it further. And um, I, I mean, I can see where I'd love to have great refactoring. I'd love to, let's just hit that. I don't know why it's going so slow. So um, explain this class. Look at that, much faster. So I, I don't know what's going on. So the class has a number of I command objects, I mean, that's typical with WPF. Um, there are several observable collections, such as time off types. Um, so basically, it must be displaying uh, lists of stuff on the screen, uh, various property. It doesn't really tell me, hey, I'm this form, you know, class has various, it's not, you know, saying, hey, I have on dates to Add dates to request, I'll remove item low values. There's a save command on save, but I gotta read a lot. I mean, it's shorter than reading the whole thing, but this doesn't stick out. Now, I'm using exclude code coverage. So, I mean, this project I'm, I'm using for that conference, I'm talking about SpecFlow, I'm talking about Striker. Um, Striker is a mutation testing. I'm, I have fluent validation in here. I mean, I got a slew of um, NuGet packages that I'm using. Um, so fluent validation, fluid assertions in my tests. Um, yeah, SQLite, uh, nSubstitute, specflow, uh, xUnit. I mean, I, I got a pretty solid, I didn't want to add too many layers, but I wanted it to be readable. 
Um, so, I mean, I wanted it close as a real production app without putting in a ton of time. Um, so I, you know, have dependency injection, follow the solid principles, um, have it look nice, you know, have this app so you can, um, I, I didn't want to add too many layers. So really, if you start looking at the WPF app itself, the core of the WPF app really, um, is just WPF stuff. So I've, I have helpers, I have converters, um, these models are, are for the UI. Um, MVVM stuff for navigation, that's WPF. Um, so th those are all extracted in the core and through registration I line that stuff up. User controls, views. So literally, like, this is just the looks of it. And I must not have my stuff set to, it's 1242 in the morning. Um, dark mode at night. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it gives me a way to come in. I got, you know, check my pending requests. I don't have any. I have my calendar. Um, I think this is the first time around this machine, so there's no real data set up. Um, just going to add users and, um, So nice, just a nice looking UI, something that looks somewhat real. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really feel like I, I'm gonna have a great presentation um, at that conference. And then, yeah, and like I said, I, I get into spec flow. I, I um, get into the living doc, uh, talk about DD, BDD. Um, a little bit about TDD, um, yeah, and bummed here. Okay, so last thing I want to try. So it did really good on the Gherkin syntax with spec flow. Um, all right, so now I have Copilot here. Now let's see here. So let's um, let's do this. Um, uh, tell me about um, living duck. So awesome. So it, that's part of Gherkin. So it's part of code. All right. So um, show me the command line to generate uh, the living duck. context okay so basically yeah okay path to spec output files all right so all right so now for the fun part is I have a markdown file here and so all right uh, create a markdown for um, for working with um, rolling docs oops okay so it must be talking about Cucumber, not SpecFlow. Um, update this so it is about SpecFlow. So now it's taking part of my other stuff that's in here and markdown compared to the uh, event living are always up to date with your code base. So where's my is is this just displaying that way because <laughs> because it 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 is markdown? I mean is there a copy in this one? Anyway, I was I was playing with it and it did create me some true markdown. I don't know what I'm asking different, but then again, another copilot, another um, 
So another thing that just doesn't seem to jive the way I expect it to. So I'm not, I don't want to put down Copilot X. It's early, it's preview. Um, I mean, ChatGPT is all the rage still. I mean, it, it's been out for six months now. Well, six months on the 30th. So November 30th was like the release date. And um, yeah, I mean, just mm, so, so kind of bummed. So um, I really wish I could have recorded some of the stuff we talked about when I did this at work uh, with the group of people. Um, it was doing a bit better, maybe because I was willing to type more. Um, but yeah, that uh, it's a bummer. It's a bummer. It just is it not good enough to buy it? Maybe. I may. I I think um, buying the G, uh, Chat GPT four is probably your best bet at the moment. Um, I know it's 20 bucks a month versus 10 bucks a month, but I'm using the free one versus this. The free one's beating it. And you got Bing Chat that seems to kind of bridge the gap. I guess with all three of them, um, makes sense. I just, right now, I'm invested in it. I've talked so much about it. I'm going to keep going with it. I, if it um, comes back around, fixes some of these issues up, that'd be great. Um, now, they're, they do have... Uh, stuff for feedback. Uh, let's see here. They let's see here. Was it in this one then? You can hit send chat feedback. So um, gone and added a couple ideas in there. Um, I, I'll probably review my video today and at the same time come back around and um, and add um, some more little quirks to. Tell them, hey, this is acting funny, that's acting funny, but it's in preview. I'm not not giving up on it. I'm heavily invested in the concept. Um, your jobs are safe. <laughs> it can't go beyond the file you're on. Um, I mean, once we start talking to those about a solution and what you're doing with the solution, I, I mean, there's a time where I feel like it can get there. Um, we've seen a lot of stuff where it's been impressive. Maybe a, I'm just a poor driver. Um, but then again, you know, tools only as good as the driver, but at the same time, um, I mean, we're, we can get there. It can get, it can get better for someone that's just poking around doing stuff. So thanks for watching. Um, Subscribe, uh, put messages in, um, let me know what you think, what your comments are, what, what you'd like to see. Um, uh, come see me at that conference. And um, yeah, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for spending the time.